Yo, yo, what's going on, guys? It's your boy Chris coming at you with another episode to the Beautiful Struggle podcast. And this is episode number 61, where we talk about personal development and business on one podcast. If that sounds like something that's interesting to you, we drop a new episode every single Monday of the week, bright and early. So start your week off right. Start your week off with some motivation and some inspiration. Uh, today, we have a very special guest on. Uh, I'll go ahead and give you a little bit of background about my guest. My guest is an entrepreneur. Um, He is a U.S. Air Force veteran. He's the owner of Park Hill Capital, a multi-purpose investment firm specializing in real estate. He's a stock investor, and he's also the owner of a Millionaire Mindset podcast. Welcome, Xavier Miller. How you doing, bro? I'm doing great, man. appreciate the intro. That was an amazing intro. I'm, I'm glad to be on, man. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for uh, giving us your time, man. I wanted to ask you right off the bat, bro, who did your intro for your podcast? <laughs> hey, that's funny. That's my little brother, but people always bro. think that's me. We, yeah, that's my little brother. Bro, I was like, is this him? I was like, bro, this is fire. Every time I play one of your podcasts, I'm like, bro, I'd be like really getting in the mood and getting motivated. I'm like, bro, this is fire. He did yeah, that's what yeah, he does, man. He we, we actually got a whole uh I'm dropping the whole like Men of Mindsets album. And he's gonna be the Ooh. artist. He's gonna be he's gonna be making all the songs. It's almost done. It should have been done, but with COVID messed up a lot of stuff with like studio time and stuff like that. Wow. But, yeah, dope. yeah. Yeah. That's that'll be I'll be dropping yeah. <laughs> That's dope. I'm excited for that. So uh Sorry. yeah, man, let's let's uh dive into your your story, your background, um, you growing up. Um, you know, where did it all start for Xavier? So I'm from uh Chicago, born and raised my whole life and uh grew up in a uh I don't wanna say pretty I don't wanna call it's not really middle class. Whatever it is before middle class, we's that 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 okay. that space between mm-hmm. being like poor and middle class, whatever that space is, mm-hmm. that's what we pretty much was at. So uh grew up in a two parent household and uh like a decent area, like uh that's pretty much how I was raised, and I started getting into entrepreneurship at like the early, like the early age, like six years old. I started like my first mm-hmm. business. It was like with candy and stuff like that, and then it was just doing like other things. I always like had my hands to something, and then when I got to high school, like school just never wasn't my thing. Like it was something that I never like. It, it always felt like it was stupid to me, and I always was one of those people that felt like I was going to do well. I was going to be successful went for it out school so I was like I never really cared so then after school like I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do and I had a brother that was in the Navy at the time and he lived in Florida he was like man you can come down here and stay with me and just figure out what you want to do so I moved to Florida when I was like 18 might have been yeah, like 18 and I stayed with my brother for like close to a year and I was just like working jobs figuring out what I wanted to do and he always put a bug in my ear he said hey man you should consider the military but he was like if you do don't join the Navy don't join the Marines, join the Air Force. Like that, he was like, the Air Force would be better. It would be better for you. So I'm like, I thought about it. So then eventually I moved back to Chicago. And then I joined the Air Force. Then I joined the Air Force. Mm-hmm. I moved out to Cali and I was in Cali for my enlistment. And then I got into like real estate, stock investing, all that kind of stuff, business. And then I got out and I just started doing stuff on my own. And that's pretty much that's pretty much how I started. Wow, that's crazy. Do you have any uh, entrepreneurs in your family? Or are you the only one? Uh, yeah, I got my uh, my brother. He's in he's in real estate as well. He's a realtor, okay. so that's pretty much an entrepreneur. And I have besides that, like I got like cousins and uncles. There was like street entrepreneurs, if you know what mm. I mean. But yeah, yeah, but other than that, like none none that was like with like with their own legitimate businesses, really. Yeah, yeah. No, the reason why I asked that because I'm like I'm wondering. You know, you're in the Air Force, you know, what made you want to get into entrepreneurship? You know, a lot of times uh, we need to create that exposure for ourselves. And if we don't see anybody else doing it, if we don't see anybody else making money in real estate. It's kind of hard for us to transition from what we're doing to entrepreneurship. So what was that transition for you like? And did you see somebody else doing it? Like what intrigued you to get into it? So, so uh, for me personally, entrepreneurship was something that I always knew I would be into. And I knew being in the military, I would just use that as a stepping stone. Like I knew like it was something that I wanted to do, it was something that I'm still proud of that I did to this day, but it was something that I knew 
I wouldn't be in for 20 years. I knew I would get in, like, uh, like mature, grow my experiences and stuff like that. And then I'll eventually branch off and do my own thing. And that's exactly what I did. And uh, I didn't really have too many examples to uh, seen before me. It was just stuff that I deployed in 2017. Mm -hmm. I went to Qatar. And uh, when I went to Qatar, like, if for anybody that's familiar with the military, when you deploy, you're not doing anything. All you're mm -hmm. doing work, you working or you working out or you sleeping or you eating. That's pretty much all you're doing for six, seven months, maybe for a year for some people. But I was there for like seven months and that's all I did. So during that period, like I was just, you're working six days a week, 10, 12 hours a day after work. If I'm not sleeping or working out or eating, I'm like reading, looking up mm -hmm. on biz and stuff and yeah, stuff like that. So, and then, and then also at that time it was, uh, I, oh yeah, this, I forgot to tell you this part, man. This this is the most crucial part. Like I had to before you deploy, and I always tell this story. But before you deploy, the military advised everyone to create a will. So that was mm -hmm. something that I had to do. I was making a will. When I was making my will, I realized like that I didn't have anything. Like I'm I, mm -hmm. like I always tell people. I remember people. I, I remember it like it was like literally yesterday, man. I remember right now. I had like ten pairs of shoes. It was like all Jordans. I had, like, my Xbox. I had a watch that my girl bought me at the time. And I had, like, a little money in savings. And I remember just looking around the room because it was, like, 15 other people in there. And I probably was, like, the youngest person. And I was just looking around, like, man, am I the only one? Like, because I ain't got – I'm like, yo, I ain't got nothing. Like, man, it was like if I, if, I was, if I was to die today, it's like I've been living for no reason. So mm. at that point – and that was in – that was in – because I didn't leave to January 2017. So when I created my will, this was, like, in the summertime – or 2016. But when it happened, I said, all right, when I leave, I'm changing everything. Like, isn't mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that was just all I needed for it to click for me. Man, that's crazy. Uh, a yeah. lot of times we don't, we don't think about, um, you know, you know, when we go, what are we leaving left? What are we leaving behind for, you know, the future generation, you know, for whoever it is, you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's crucial. That's something that motivates me every single day. Like I wake up and it may sound a little crazy, but I'm like, if I go today, what am I leaving behind? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, I got a lot of work to do, you know? Exactly. So, so that's crazy. Um, man, I wanted to know, transitioning out of the, uh, the Air Force into entrepreneurship, what are some like early sacrifices that you had to give up or go through? Um, because it's, it's a totally different mindset to have to be in those two industries. So what are some, some things that you had to sacrifice? So for me personally, like, I don't know how other people's story was regarding, like, having a full-time job or being in the military and transitioning to entre entrepreneurship. But mine was, like, honestly, it was very simple because the job I had in the military, like, my last year, to be honest, I really didn't really have to do as much. It was, like, a relaxed mm. job because everybody knew I was getting out and stuff like that. Mm. So they wasn't trying to put too much on my shoulders. So in a lot of situations, it was kind of, it was kind of if, it was like I was already kind of out for real, be it just being honest, mm -hmm. man. Because, like, if I, I could hit up my supervisor and be like, hey, I don't feel good today, he would just be like, all right, see you tomorrow or something. Or I could be like, I want to take a couple of weeks off to go on leave or something. It was mm -hmm. like, it was like, it was nothing. Because they, they knew I was getting mm -hmm. out, so they didn't really treat me like like the average person in the mm -hmm. military. So, but when, so when I got out, what'd you say? No, I was going to say, because mentally, you was, like, already out of it. Yeah, mentally, yeah, okay. mentally, like, okay. just being real, mentally, I was, like, pretty much already out of it. So, when I officially got out, like, when I was officially out, the transition was so much more smooth. It was just because, it was a couple of things that were different, but mentally, I was already, like, in that space. So, I didn't have to make yeah. a huge, like, jump, for real. So, you're transitioning out, and at this time, you're already investing in, in stocks and real estate, right? Yep. So what was like the first thing that you were like, okay, I'm going all in on this or like my focus is here? So uh, the first thing I did, like I said, I was in Qatar. So when I came, like I knew I was, I, I knew when I come, when I was coming back, I'm like, I'm going all in on business investing. So the first thing I did, I started investing in the stock market. And the first investment I made was into Starbucks. I'm like, let me mm -hmm. just see what it, at the time, it might've been like 30 in the thirties or something like that, $30, $34 or something. I could be wrong, but I think it was around that. And uh, I started buying that, started seeing the move, just so I could get an understanding. That's the thing. That's what I tell people. Like, once you start in the stock market, don't just aim to make money immediately. Aim for understanding. Because if you got to understand it, then it'll be easier to make money. 
You got to aim to just see how this stuff works. Don't be trying to hit home runs and right. come up on a bunch of money as soon as you get in. Just get in on a level so you can understand it. So that's what I did. I got in. I started playing, putting money in Starbucks. Not even a lot of money, just to, just to see how it works. So then when I started understanding it, being in it more, investing in other little things, and I was like, oh, okay, now I'm comfortable with taking bigger risks. So, and at this time, this is before, like, crypto and bitcoin took mm. off like mm. and like i said i was deployed and i was already hearing so much and like i said i ain't had nothing but time to do my research so i was like, i was just deployed doing research so at this time i'm like all right and for those that know crypto and bitcoin is way more volatile than the stock market it's crazy especially at yeah, this time crazy. like so so uh that was my next leap i took i started i went in i went all in on bitcoin and this was like in the summer of 2017 and then and how after much that was it then it was like three thousand dollars, and then yeah. by by the but by December, was it December? By December or November, it was twenty. It was it, it hit almost twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. So I got in at the right time, and I was in for like a couple months, and I still had some. I I held it much longer, but I knew a lot of it. I did uh, get rid of, but yeah, that was that was right before it got to like twenty thousand. Then after that, I transitioned into real estate. Hmm. So you, you so that transition was basically you taking your profits and and seeing what you can do in real estate. Yep, it, that's that's yeah. all it is for me. That's why I, yeah. uh, when people see me online, they always see me use the recycle emoji. And they be like, "Why?" They be like, "Why are you using the recycle emoji?" And I be like, "I for my use, it's not the recycle. I see it as this. This is how I treat money. I just create mm -hmm. a cycle. Whatever I get, I put it into something. When it makes mo money, I either put it back into that." Or I try to aim for bigger things to put something else to. Like it's all a cycle, just nonstop. It is, and I never really take money out of that cycle and use it for other things. I I, I create other streams of income if I want to do other things, other other things. But for my right. investments, it's just a cycle. It's gonna keep going in a cycle to keep building yeah. and building and building. It's just like rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. That's all it is. Like if I put money yeah. in the stock market, like prime example, uh, what's this month? This this is November. So a couple months ago. I had like a bunch of money in Tesla. And I made a lot of money. Took it out, put it into something else. Mm -hmm. So it's just the same. It's, it's, that's that's all it is for me. Like when I I'm reading the market, seeing where where is the biggest opportunity, and rinsing and repeating. Yeah, absolutely. So were you were you tra were you holding for the long term, or were you doing options? What were you doing in the stock market? For when? What, what I was just, uh, what I was referring to just now. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was. Uh, so I, I guess, I, I guess, when you first started with stocks, were you like oh, holding okay. for the long term? Yeah. Yeah, I was holding for the long term, man. I didn't even gotcha. know nothing. I didn't know nothing. I didn't know anything about options or none of that, bro. I didn't know, find out about options until like last year, bro. Because I was mm. such a long term investor, like anything that was relatively short term, I didn't think about it. It was just like out of my sight. I'm not doing that. So that's mm -hmm. how. Like after I started investing in Starbucks and stuff, I started investing into Amazon, and that's what. Uh, I made I made some good money through Amazon, Facebook, Apple, and stuff like that. Gotcha. And then gotcha. yeah, that that led me to crypto. Then crypto, I got into real estate. So jumping into real estate, what was your your first type of buy? Was it a flip? Was it a, a hold? What was it? No, it's a property that I still own to this day. I bought it in 2018 in Detroit, Michigan. I paid 16.9 thousand for it. I got a. Uh, so for those who don't know, for properties that's that's cheap, you can't get mortgage loans. You have to get like personal loans. So mm. I took out a personal, even like mind you, even though I had the money to pay for it in full, I don't want to. I don't want to use my own money. I want to use someone else's right. money because it had right. a tenant and it still has the same tenant in there to this day that she was paying rent. So I, I, I took out a, a personal loan for like thirteen to fourteen thousand, and I just put up the rest. I put up like three thousand out of my pocket. So I essentially got the place for three grand. Put a little work into it, but like I said, it has a tenant already pay, pay, paying rent. And at this point, mm -hmm. the house is almost paid off. And that's due to, you know, me having a tenant. Wow. Like, she's, so she's, 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 what mm -hmm. was that? Go ahead. No, you good. I was you going to say, so, uh, you got, so when you get the personal loan, obviously you got a bill you have to pay every month. But like I said, mm -hmm. it was so, the loan was so low, the bill was only like $300 a month. So the tenant, wow. And our tenant is paying much more than that for rent. So essentially, our tenant was paying back the loan, and she paid us extras mm, that was left over. You. Yeah. Got you. 
Gotcha, gotcha. I have a couple questions about um, house hacking, using mm-hmm. the FHA loan to to get your first property, maybe multi-unit property, um, and, and using that as a, as another source of income. Um, but what I I had seen online somewhere is that let's just say you're about to get married. If you're about to get married, someone suggested that you should use that loan before you get married, because once you get married, you can't separately use that loan or something like that for a, for, FH, that? for FHA yeah. loan. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not because I've never used the FHA loan for my personal use, so I'm not sure how true that is. But I know for the VA loan, it's something. It's something similar that they say where uh, if you were somebody that both are veterans, y'all probably should use your loans before y'all get joined married because that's what they'll do. But as far as regarding FHA loan, I have to look into that. I haven't, I haven't, uh, but that's, that's, that sound, that sound, that sounds about right. Cause that's usually how it goes when you get married, you know, you guys become one instead of being two single individuals. But I'm thinking like, there's no way to get around that. There's no way to, there's gotta be a I way. Mean, it's always a way to get around, but that's <laughs> this okay, America. Okay. This America, baby, it's yeah. always it's always a way to get around something. Yeah, we'll we'll leave it at that. But for the people that <laughs> <laughs> for the people that don't know what house hacking is, man, you want to uh, kind of give them a description of what that is. I know on your Instagram, you got a lot of great resources, and you explain a lot of uh, what it is. But for the people that don't know, uh, inform them. Yeah, that's, we talk about uh, house hacking a lot on. Uh, well, my, my company, Park Hill Capital, we consult people on that. But house hacking is essentially buying a property. Like, uh, it could be a multi-unit or it could even be a one unit or where you rent out your bedrooms or rent out the other units. So, essentially, you get to a point where you can be living for very cheaply or you could be living for free. Because let's say if you got a property, let's say if you have a, a, a property for, yeah, two units and each unit is pretty much a 1000 but your mortgage is a $1,000. And you have like one tenant in the other unit paying a thousand dollars. You you pretty much living for free. So that's what mm-hmm. house hacking is, and that's a great strategy for a lot of people to get into when looking to initially get started in real estate because it gives you the experience of actually owning the property you're living in and the experience of like dealing with a tenant. Mm-hmm. And that's always a great experience that you need, especially for a real estate investor, because dealing with tenants is something that. I think everybody, like especially if you want to be in real estate, it's something that you have to go through and deal with to understand. Because once each every tenant is different and they'll present different problems and stuff like that, some tenants mm-hmm. will be much more easy to work with than others. But that experience and just knowing how to deal with people, that'll be so much better. Especially when you start getting property managers, because you don't know what to expect and you don't know mm-hmm. how to deal with things. You don't know how much things cost, and it will make it much more harder for somebody to get over on you or to finesse you or anything like that. Because you got a lot of shitty property managers that they'll try to do things like that if they know they're dealing with somebody that's inexperienced. Mm-hmm. No, I love that you brought up, and it's similar to what you said earlier, um, it's, it's a great way to get experience and to get knowledge mm-hmm. and to learn about real estate. You know, you might not jump into, this is a possibility, but there's, there may be a chance that you jump into it. You're not making a boatload of money. But yep. like you said, it's it's a great way to get experience. Just like jumping into the stock market. Sometimes you just just buy Starbucks, just buy it like a Nike or something like that, and see what happens and exactly. learn and do your research. But the important exactly. thing is to jump in, to jump into it. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, man, that's real, and that's why it's so important for people or the people that listen. Is that's why it's so important to start if you if you're young, start now, and if you're a little bit older and you feel like oh, I'm gonna start soon, just start now because the sooner you start the sooner you could get the experience. Because the thing is, when you start on something, generally how it goes is you're not going to start making a lot of money immediately. Because what, mm-hmm. what, what, what causes someone to make a lot of money is typically experience. And, but the thing about experience is you can't get it until you start. So somebody mm-hmm. saying, I'm going to wait until this or that, you're pretty much delaying the, pro- the, pro- the progress or you get into that bag that you want to get to because you're just saying, I'm going to start later. But that's why I tell young people, like, 2021 like no i'll start now don't even worry about the money just get all the experience because you're still (laughs) super young by the time you get 25 26 the bag really gonna be coming in 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 an abundance yeah absolutely what i think the quote goes um the first time to plant the best time to plant a tree was yesterday and the second time the the second best time to plant one is right now (laughs) that's real that is real man you can 
Yeah, like I like I tell like I tell people because people hear stuff like that. They're like, you know, when people hear stuff that's like cliches, they kind of just throw it out the window because you hear it all the time. Yeah. But I always tell people, I'm like, man, the cliches are the cliches for a reason. They stand the yeah. test of time. So if, if it's right. something that you hear over and over like that, it's a reason. It's a reason. It's it's been said throughout years and years and years. Yeah. It's some truth. It's some truth to it. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to dive a little bit more into Park Hill Capital? And what you guys yep. are doing over there? Yeah, definitely, man. So Park Hill Capital is just a uh, because when we started, basically this started because when we started investing in properties, buying properties, we was showcased the journey. And during that process, like a lot of people would just reach out to us and say, "Man, we want to do something similar. How y'all do that?" Because our main thing is we live in California and we don't invest in California. We invest in out of state places that's far away from where we at. People are like, whoa, like, man, how that work? That's scary. That's that seems scary. I'm scared to do that. So we started Park Hill Capital and and just a way to reach out to people to teach people that process if that's what they're interested to. So if that's what they're interested in, and we also we also acquire properties under. We do mobile homes. We do a bunch of stuff, but we have like different branches. And one of our branches mm-hmm. where we dealing with uh, most of our customers is on the consulting, the teaching side. So we have like a membership group that people could join where we do like monthly calls and we uh, connect people with a lot of resources. We show properties that we have available. And then we do that. We do a uh, expertise package where we actually walk people through the whole process and just help them close their first, first deal with no matter how long it takes on their part. Wow. No, that's yeah. amazing. That's a great resource to have for sure. Yeah. Um, you with you being in business what was maybe some of your early struggles or maybe a loss that you had or something that like you had a you overcome uh i can tell you off top man to some of the biggest struggles for me was uh time management and delegating like trying to do everything because the one mm-hmm. thing about it man it's only 24 hours in a day and the average person gonna sleep for what six seven eight of them right and then you got to, so that, that that leaves you, let's say that leaves you 16 hours. You got to eat. You got to be doing other stuff. So there's not enough hours in the day. This is what I think business, business owners need to understand. All entrepreneurs need to understand this. It's not enough hours in the day for you to try to do everything that you want to do. So mm-hmm. with that being said, you got to be willing to delegate. But the thing with delegation, because I know it's tough for a lot of people, the thing of delega- delegation is you got to delegate to people that you know that can handle and do what, what, what you want of them. So that might that may require you hiring an assistant where you have to train them for a month or a couple of weeks so they can really understand and grasp what you need to do. And with that being said, that's going to free up a lot of your time so you can really focus on the things that you really need to be focused on and not the mundane tasks. Because I like mm-hmm. to, like my thing was I had to realize that it, I had to focus on the income producing things like all the mundane stuff let me just delegate that to somebody else mm-hmm. like the little t- that's good because the, the mundane things are the thing the, the crazy part about it are the things that take up a ridiculous amount of time for whatever yeah. reason man True. the small True. stuff always takes up a lot of time but the income producing things are the most important things so i was like i need to mm-hmm. focus my energy here and the things that's that's st- that may not be as high income producing but they still need to be done let me get somebody else to do that and i'll just pay them and that's something that I think a lot of people struggle as entrepreneurs just like trying mm-hmm. to keep all the money in house, like not trying yeah. to branch out and pay people. But man, paying people is 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 like a hack. Like it's like a hack no, for real. Because sure. it buys your time back and somebody doing it for you, especially if they're doing it the right way. That's why I talk about the importance of actually training them or teaching them so they do it so they know what they're doing. So you freeing up your time and you can focus on which exactly what you need to be focusing on. So that was something. What was the other one I said? Uh, I said time management. And, uh, I can't remember what Man, I said. I forgot. forgot. I forgot too. <laughs> I said. But I was. I, I was going to say, man. A lot of that is a struggle for a lot of business owners because um, I tell sometimes I talk to other business owners and I tell them, man, like right now you're working in your business. So yep. you're, you're doing what exactly what you just said. You're doing all the mundane tasks. You you post in and like delegate that to other people work on your business you know what i'm yep. saying there's a huge difference a huge that's difference. where that's where uh business owners take themselves to the next level when they can work on their business no yeah, man because man, like took prime example think about it like this most businesses probably on instagram today they probably go on their own instagram page right and that is simple like i said it's a mundane task it's simple but as we all know growing a social media account growing an instagram yeah. is time consuming 
You know what I mean? Make, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like making making edits to whatever pictures or posts and thinking of the captions and that shit is hella time consuming. So nice. for you to be able to 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 delegate to, that to someone to say this is your thing, I just need to focus you on this. Like if you confused on something, got any questions or my opinions, I got you. Well, just I'm gonna give you the blueprint. All you do is just follow this blueprint. That's gonna mm-hmm. free up so much time on your end because you're not too busy on these social sites, scrolling all day, think, mm-hmm. taking 45 minutes to make a post. That's going to buy back so much of your time. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Were you, are you one of those people where you're like, man, I'm going to delegate this, but I feel like I can do it better than them? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm definitely one of those and people. How, and so how that, do you deal with that? How do you deal with that? So the, I, I think the best way to deal with it is whoever you delegate to, teaching them so you have that trust in them. Like, mm. if you just delegating it to them, but you never show them how to do it, you just say, hey, I expect this out of you without, like, putting your expectations or setting that bar, You, I think you'll always be, like, disappointed. Because you always feel like, <laughs> man, I can't nobody do it like me. You always right. don't feel like that. That's just what it is. But, to, to like, even when you do delegate to somebody that you feel like is good at it, you still going to feel like, I could do it better yeah. than that. For some reason, yeah. that's just how we are as humans. So... But with that being said, I think that's why training is so important though. So when you train when you train somebody up, they you know like they know what they're doing. And they know mm-hmm. that I expect they know what I expect from them. So and if they don't do it at the expectation at the expectation level that I wanted at, I'm the type I ain't scared to do it over. Like if it's not mm-hmm. exactly how I want it, we gotta do it over. So that's just, that's I think that's the best way to get out of that. Or like, nah, nobody gonna do it better than me. Just Train if you if you delegate, make sure that person know exactly what they're doing step by step. Mm. Cause it is, and it'll make it so much simpler for you. Oh yeah, absolutely. So with so this is something I, I've been talking a lot about on the the podcast is you know being an entrepreneur, business owner. There's a lot going on every single day. Your every mind day. is every, every like every day. Your mind is everywhere. Um, there's ups and downs. It's like a roller coaster, um, and something that not talked about often is mental health and how mm. entrepreneurs we deal with mental health and um the importance of it you know what i'm saying a lot of time when you're a business owner you're making money you're an entrepreneur you feel like you superman nothing can stop you <laughs> when that train hits you it hits you hard <laughs> you know what that's I'm saying? Right. that's right so but my question to you is you know over the years how have you dealt with it and um how have you like Maybe what are some things that you implemented in your life to make sure that your mental health is in a good state? Man, that's a great question. So for me personally, I'm one of those people. I'm not one of those entrepreneurs that's like, I need to wake up at 3 a.m. every day, 4 a.m. every day. Because I know a lot of people, they watch like YouTube videos, motivation stuff. And they be like, man, I got to work up at 3 a.m. I got to work all day. Like I used to kind of think like that. But now like the older I get, I'm like, no. That ain't that ain't for me. Like one of the, mm. one of the key things that people, especially entrepreneurs, man, the key things that we sleep on, ironically, no pun intended, is sleep. The importance of getting your rest. So I'm mm. not one of those entrepreneurs that's like afraid to uh, to get my rest or going to feel bad. That's most important. I'm not going to feel bad for getting my rest because I know that's going to play a key part to to my mental health. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to be in a good mental state. When you at a mm-hmm. at a lack of rest, you know you already know mm-hmm. how it goes. You're gonna be angry, yeah. upset. So I'm one of those people that every day I strive to get at least seven, eight hours. Every mm-hmm. every that's that's mandatory unless it's something that unless it's something that obviously where it's like super super important that I need to do. Obviously, I'll be like cool, I don't got no problem. But I try to just aim for that. So so that's gonna that's a long going. I'm gonna wake up in a good mood just because I'm mm-hmm. rested. I feel good. You know what I'm saying. So other yeah. key things is. Like uh, I like to do meditation. That's extremely important. And I like to take breaks. I like to take mm-hmm. breaks and just sit and chill, like without my phone, without all that. I, I could just sit in my office and just sit, look out the window. You know what I'm saying? Just chill, mm-hmm. calm my, like calm myself down if I need to be calm. If I need to be calmed down, and just chill, man. Like it, it's and it sounds. It may sound easy. I may make it sound easy. Easy because that's really how I live my life, man. I'm not one of those people that get stressed out or upset easily. Because I yeah, you seem like I you're super like, chill. Yeah, I am, man. I am. I'm tr- it's like things don't really get me upset like that. If they do, I know how to like, like I'm 27 now, so it's like I know myself well enough to like, all right, I know what I need to do to bring myself down. But like I said, the main thing for me is I make sure I get my rest. 
meditation. I read. And mm-hmm. I just breathing is another thing. And like this, this is another thing that I tell not just entrepreneurs, but everybody when it comes to uh, anxiety. Because at one point I was dealing with anxiety, like really bad. Like I damn near thought I was like going to be in a hospital, man, having a heart mm-hmm. attack or something. I was, man, it was so <laughs> crazy, man. But the one thing that that helped me, and I, don't, I think this can help other people. I'm not saying it will help everybody. But I learned is like when anxiety is all just your head, like you telling mm-hmm. yourself constantly like these different fears and what's what could go wrong and how people may look at it. That's like it's it's all mental. And when I realized like all those thoughts that pop up, you have to doubt every single one of them, like good or mm-hmm. bad. Like don't worry, don't let your thoughts like assume you and rule you. You have to control your mind. So like with me, when those thoughts do creep in. I just don't believe it. And it may sound mm-hmm. simple. Like I tell people this all the time, like you just have to doubt every single thought. Just don't believe it. Don't, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Just worried about the action and doing something. But all those crazy thoughts you're telling yourself, oh, this is going to work. This might go bad. Just don't believe it. And do mm-hmm. those other things, like I said, get your get your rest. Take times off. Make sure you're working out. And nine times out of ten, man, those things handle like anxiety for real mm, i know i know yeah. it helped me immensely bro it helped me so much like i i've had anxiety since then so a lot of the things that you listed off man whether you're you're an entrepreneur or not i think it helped out a lot of people you know even you know covid going on you working at the house all day yeah. you know doing those things i think will really help out people and uh when you mention anxiety um i think the statistic says like Something crazy like eighty percent or eighty five percent of our thoughts are negative. Mm. See, and I, I didn't know I that. I think we, ha- I think we have like, I, don't quote me on this, but I think we have like sixty thousand thoughts a, a day, different thoughts, and eighty percent of them are negative. It could be even higher, honestly. It could be like Probably. ninety or something like that. But I, it, it's crazy, yeah. I, I think for most people, being honest, I think it is higher. I think most people probably have negative thoughts all day. Like if, if if you because I and I say that because you could just look at people because your your their life and your lifestyle is an extension of the way you think. So you don't have to you don't have to really. That's why I tell people all the time. Like you don't have to go through these mazes and ups and downs to see like mm, what this person how they think what they think about. All you have to do is watch somebody's life, what's going on in their life, and that'll tell you everything about their mindset and the way they think. Mm. So if you if you see yeah if you see somebody life that's constantly in drama, constantly in BS, or they constantly having with financial strife and going that tells you everything that's going on in their mind that it's just all bad bad thoughts because their life is just an extension of it. So mm. yeah, so with that being said, I, that's what I said. I think is for most people it is much higher, but like I, that's why I said I think a key thing for that is to doubt every thought. If people like if you got eighty percent of bad thoughts. But every time it pops up in your head, you telling yourself, "Man, I don't believe that. That's a lie." Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You just you really convince you know what I'm saying? You really convince yourself right. like, "No, nah, that's not true. That's not gonna happen." Every time you had that thought, "Look, this is not gonna work. I'm gonna fail," and you convince yourself, "No, nah, it is gonna work. It ain't gonna work. Why am I thinking like that?" But you got to be conscious, and not only you got to be you got to be uh, what's the you got to be alert. Because most people mm-hmm. don't pay attention to their thoughts, so you have to be alert into what you're telling yourself, so you can tell yourself, "Oh, that's not true." That's not gonna happen. And when I man, when I learned that for real, bro, when I learned that, bro, that changed everything for me. Because like you said, most thoughts do be crazy. Because mm-hmm. thoughts is something that you can control, but for most people they can't control. Right. Like it's just right. uncontrollable things popping up in yeah. your head. And if you believe in it all, man, you'll drive yourself crazy, man. Like that's why you can't believe. Right. Like man, I don't be- like I don't believe shit. I just work. I just focus on doing what I need to do and having mm-hmm. belief and faith in that. The thoughts that come in my head. Even if it's good, like I'm so at this point, I doubt everything. Even if it's good, I'm like, hey, take that out of my head. I let me focus on what I need to do next. Fuck all that. What's going to happen? All these fears mm-hmm. and shit. Just let me just focus on what's in front of me. And if I put my energy into that, do it the right way, everything going to work out. Mm-hmm. Be in a moment. That's, next- that's what I tell people. Be in a moment. Yeah, that's next level because um, they say, that's another quote I've seen. They say that when you living in uh, the when you have anxiety, you're living in the future. You're worrying about yeah. like what's gonna, ha- what could happen, and if you're depressed, you're like thinking about the past and what yep. happened, what could have happened, or what I did. And what you said, uh, being present, and being in the moment. Yep. You know yep. Because so. it's 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 extremely yeah. hard to be uh, oh, like yeah. just being real. It's hard to be the de- it's hard to be depressed 
and anxious if you live it in a moment. Because what are you depressed mm-hmm. and anxious about? You live in the moment right now. You're just trying to do your best right yeah. now. And there's no yeah. room to be anxious or depressed in those moments. Absolutely. So speaking about mindset, um, you got a podcast called A Millionaire Mindset, man. What made you start the podcast and tell the audience a little bit about it? Um, it's amazing. You guys have like over a hundred episodes. You guys have been going strong for a while and you guys have some mm-hmm. amazing guests on there. You want to talk yep. a little bit more about that and why you started it? Yep. So uh, the Men and the Masters podcast was a podcast that me and my girl, Deanna, she's the co-host. We started, mm-hmm. it's almost it's almost coming up on two years next month. We started December 24th, 2018. It was our first episode. Wow. And it was something that we started. Honestly, man, it was something. Because at that point, I was already investing in, in, uh, in the stock market, real estate, for probably like a year at that point. Was it like, yeah, like I think like at the year at that point. So it was already a lifestyle that I was living. And then mm-hmm. I, like our mindset was, these was the conversations. The conversations that we have on the show, those were conversations me and her was having every single day. And we were both still in the military at the time, but we could home off work on our lunch break. We just talking about stuff like that all day, every day. So it got to a point where it was just like, man, we should do a podcast so other people that are similar situation as, uh, as ours, they could hear this and it could help them too. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because this changed our life. It helped us. Let's give other people opportunity so they could hear it and it could help them. So I'm like, she was like, all right, let's do it. And she's the one that came up with the name. She came up with the name. I'm like, oh, man, that's dope. And the first episode, like, this is the crazy part. If you go li- back, listen to, like, the first 10 episodes, like, those were made in our living room. No headphones, mm. no microphone, just made off the iPhone. And, he, and oh, you can wow. tell, and you can tell if you go back <laughs> and li- and you go back and listen to it, you can tell. Like, we, just, it was just, like, raw, authentic mm-hmm. record and us just talking. So that's how I started, man. And it just, we kept, we stayed consistent with it kept growing it and growing it and growing it. And, it and now at this point it's just like a it's just like a thing of its own man i'll be in random places man like it's crazy it's like i could be in a random places and people would be like hey you so and so from this and that i'm like damn like sometimes i'll be forgetting how like like how impactful it is for some people yeah. man like those just those conversations alone and we talk about you know we talk about everything from real estate entrepreneurship personal growth like and yeah that's those are the main things we talk about like you know getting your money up but also mm-hmm fixing your mind and building yourself mm-hmm. as a person and doing and that mindset because without the mindset part all this is going to be virtually impossible yeah yeah absolutely talk about how like the because for me having guests on man it's like one of the most exciting things you know talking to people like you getting your perspective mm-hmm. and just connecting possibly networking and whatnot and and just like adding value to one another talk about like the impact that has on your life connecting with new people or even having people on that um you're cool with on the podcast and, oh, and sharing you guys this conversation to the audience man i think it's one of the i think it has for me personally it's been one of the best like networking tools for me without yeah. without it even being intentional like it wasn't something that right. i even thought or planned on it just happened like having guests on and a lot of the guests that we have on man it's like we ha- we built a relationship outside of them on the show where it's like i'm closer with them than some of the people that i came up with right. and like how crazy right. is that you know what i'm saying it's for people that and a lot of them i still haven't met in person yet so that's mm. just like you know what i'm saying so but it's amazing like i just love that that, that people that's trying to build themselves up or at a point where where they might be at the bottom and they hear they'll hear certain episodes they hear certain people tell their stories and then that's all they need to hear and then six months later they're in a whole yeah. a whole different position so just yeah. that alone like having guests like I think people don't understand that it's not as easy as it looks. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure you you know, mm-hmm. you know you're doing it. It's not. I yeah. think a lot of people they see it and they 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 hear a show every week. They see what's going on. They be like, man, I could do that. It's easy, which you probably could. <laughs> but would you get the same results? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Would you be able to stay consistent and do it every single week? I don't know. Like, I think that's something that people like overlook. But I always tell people, I'm like, if you think it's easy, go ahead and try to do it. You're going to see like, yeah. oh, man, I probably do. I really you going to be thinking to yourself, do I really want to do this? <laughs> yeah. Do I really want to put out an episode every week? <laughs> every week. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, man, look, you, you hear these conversations. They sound easy. Oh, they just talking. I'm going to do that. But it takes a level of that. Even with this, man, it takes a level of dedication that if you ain't willing to put into it, it ain't going to work. Yeah, absolutely. So mm-hmm. I wanted to ask, man, so you got you got yourself a queen. Are, are you guys married? No, not yet. Mm-mm. 
Okay, so I'm married, but what okay. I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to ask, man, like, talk about the importance of having a strong woman by your side in entrepreneurship, because a lot of times before you get into it, I tell people, like, if you're about to get in entrepreneurship, your significant other, they got to either be one or two things, and you can you can correct me if I'm wrong, they either got to be the best cheerleader in the world, when times are hard, they got to be the best cheerleader in the world, or they got to be in the field with you doing it. And it seems like um, you guys are doing some amazing work, and, and your girl, she she's in the field side by side. Yeah, she in the field. Yeah, yeah, man. It's man. I can't speak on this enough, man. Like you said, like, my girl. Well, like I know, cause a lot of a lot. I got a lot of friends as entrepreneurs. A lot of uh, male friends, and their girls, they're not like involved into involved into the, mm-hmm. a lot of stuff that they do, which is cool mm-hmm. too. But uh, like my girl, a lot of stuff that we do, like you know, we run a podcast together. Uh, we run our company Park Hill to go. We have a foundation, Park the Park Hill Foundation. We do that together along we got another partner that we do it with. And mm-hmm. it's man, like I can't even I couldn't even tell you how how beneficial that mm-hmm. is, man. Cause like it's 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 even hard to explain to people. It's like either people get it or they don't. Like I'll try to break it down to some people. I'm just like, man, somebody because this once it's somebody that you know you can trust. You with them mm-hmm. every day. Yeah. You know what's going on. You can trust this person. And then, like my girl, man, she's such when it comes to business. Like no lie, she's such a beast. She's such a she's so smart with it. So it's like, mm. like so some of the stuff that I'm I'm I may be great at that she may not be great in. But it's a lot of things she great in that I'm not good in. And I, and I lean mm. on her for 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 a lot for a lot of different things. And I'm trying to find out uh, find a uh, like a comparison that people could uh understand i'm giving people an analogy so that people understand how valuable i mean what i and i feel you uh what i be telling people it's like okay you can do great things by yourself you can go you can do a lot of great things by yourself but when you have someone that you can trust that's side by side with you every day you can do phenomenal things Mm -hmm. uh, things. i can't yeah i can't think of an analogy either but yeah it just just know you can go twice as fast for somebody else man, man. <laughs> twice twice twi- yeah, you could go tw- you could go twice as faster and i think the thing was so dope about working with women is women have this they just have things that they are innately better than us yeah. as men you know what i'm saying they know how to it's certain way, ways that they can maneuver through situations where they could be the relaxing uh, like let like non intimidating right. one where people might be comfortable with and comfortable dealing with the things that we just not, may not be too good at. Yeah. So even in situations like that, it just man, it's man. I can the return is is it's immeasurable, bro. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a it fact, is. man. Um, yeah. But man, I wanted to transition a little bit and, and talk about something that's kind of going on in the world right now. As you know, the elections going on. We don't got to get too political, <laughs> but. Uh, I, as of right now, I don't think we even got a president yet, but no, officially. So, but I wanted to ask you, man, like, what what do you think of all this? Uh, what's your perspective? Like I said, it don't got to be political. Um, and I really want to know, how do you think this is going to impact entrepreneurs and business? You know, maybe even what are some opportunities that you're looking forward to in 2021? Mm, man, man, this you don't is gotta, that- you don't, you don't got to no, share all your honest, secret bro. sauce either. Okay. I'm going to be honest, man. I'm one of those people, if somebody asks me a question, I'm going to be brutally honest, man. But so the, uh, the first part, you know, what was the first part of the question again? Okay. So um, what, like, what do you, what do you make up of all this? Like what, what's your perspective? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'll say this is, I'm still, but we're growing, well, granted we're still young, but this is some of the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life. Number one, yeah. like it's, you know what I'm saying? It's Thursday and we still have not had an elected president that's like that's like mind-boggling to me i'm still confused yeah. on like a lot a lot of stuff that's going on from what i'm seeing because i'm not on social media right now so that they, yeah, the, the stuff that i'm seeing like regarding like these news networks it's it's looking kind of crazy man i'm like mm. this not this not making no sense for real but uh, you you're, you're better off not on social media right now bro it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> it's like a war zone i believe it. i believe it man i'm so glad i got off at the time i did because i know especially with right now what's going on is like i know people probably losing their losing their minds but the, the secondly you said what i think what, what happened after all this mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, so you like what do you think is going to happen after all this you know maybe what are some opportunities that you and your circle are looking towards Mm, okay. So after this, man, 
to be honest, I don't even. It's hard to right now. It's hard to say what will happen. I, cause I honestly Absolutely. don't know, but I, but I think, yeah. but what I will say is, I, I I'll say I think what I think what would happen from both perspectives on like, whether each mm-hmm. person if each person on this like I honestly believe, and I don't know, and I'm not even like, I just speak I just speak my mind. I'm not even like a fan of of, mm-hmm. of either, but I just see mm-hmm. from just from a biased standpoint, this is what I think will happen. I think, and I had a lot of conversations about this as well. Like I honestly think. If I think if Joe Biden wins, I think it would be probably a recession or a depression. That's what mm-hmm. I believe. So, but on the other side of that, I think, I think if if Trump maintains his position, I think we're gonna have a very similar look as we did those first three years. Twenty twenty has been crazy because of COVID, but from twenty what twenty seventeen to twenty nineteen, I think it'll have that similar look. But on the other side, I think if Biden wins, I think it's going. I think for the people that, especially for the people that's without it without a consistent mm-hmm. job right now, I think it's going to get a little ugly because he's already said, like, pretty much he's going to shut the country down and all that kind of stuff. And I think that's going to lead to a, a, a recession or a depression. Just my opinion. I could be wrong, but yeah, that's what I yeah. think That's what I think will happen. But on the side of the opportunity rounds, so for the opportunities I see for myself and the people around me, I think our thing is to just keep doing what we're doing, man. And, I, and my, focus, my focus whole 2020 has been to stay liquid at a certain level. Mm. And the reason is because I think, I think whether either direction, there will obviously be so many opportunities. If the market crashes, we know how many opportunities that presents. And if the market is going great, that's still opportunity because every because things is going good. So I, that's why my whole thing this year is to be maintain my liquidity at a certain level. So when either position comes, me, my team, we could go all in on a lot of things, mm-hmm. man. Because I that that thing that I learned that. When COVID hit, I wasn't as liquid as I, I was. I re- what I what I needed to be in my mind. It was mm-hmm. like, okay, I could be liquid at this level and I'll be fine. COVID hit, I was still fine, but I'm like, whoa, I don't know how long this is gonna last. Like, I got a bunch of assets. Like, I got a whole bunch of assets, but I, had, I liquefied a lot of it just so I could stay liquid on hand. And that's something mm-hmm. that now I learned. Like, I got a certain point. Like, I, I was telling other people, I'm like. Uh, under one hundred thousand dollars liquid is something that I'll never do again, and I had mm-hmm. to learn. I, you know I'm saying I used to think I used to tell people like, as long as I got thirty, forty thousand in my bank account, I'm cool because I'm just focusing on buying assets. But I, mm-hmm. I miscalculated because nobody could have seen something like this happening. So my, now mm-hmm. my mindset is I need a hundred thousand liquid at all times, just because if things go south, I could put fifty into something that's extremely low. Months later, it might triple my money. I might have turned that fifty to one fifty. So that's why I say I need a hundred. So that's that's my mindset. My mindset right now is, I'm staying. I'm we stand liquid. We just keep building our money, stacking up our money, making moves, and staying liquid right now. So we can make a play mm-hmm. on either side on how this go. Either mm-hmm. way, we are gonna be making plays. Mm. That's super dope. So for the people out there, what would you recommend for folks out there to to prepare themselves for what's about to happen? Either way, because either man, way, there's gonna have to be some preparation out there. You yeah, it is. It's gonna, be a, it's gonna be a lot of desperation. Either way, so I think the best way that people could pre- prepare. And I was just having a conversation with my brother. We was having this conversation recently. I think the best way, and this all, and this is always the best way for people to prepare for things, in my opinion, is to get your get, get your skills up. So mm. when I say that, I mean like just learn different skills, man. Whether it's in tech or it's in real estate. Or it's in uh, it's fucking uh, working on be, becoming a plumber, or just getting skills up. You know what I'm saying? Because skills, as long as you have skills in this economy in this country, you'll be fine. Because somebody needs those skills. Somebody mm-hmm. needs them. But if you don't have any skills, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a struggle, in my opinion, for those people. Like within the next year or two, because if you if you it's so easy for you to get wiped out. Because that mm-hmm. skill is like you could get re- easily replaced, whether it be artificial intelligence or anything mm-hmm. else. It's so easy for, for somebody to replace you. Facts. But if you have That's skills, great. it's extremely to, it's extremely hard to be to you become like irreplaceable for real. So I think that's the number one thing need, people need to focus on is just upgrading their skill set. Just just keep learning new things, getting new certificates, getting degrees, all of just just keep doing, just keep leveling mm-hmm. yourself up, and you'll be fine. And secondly, I think. Uh, I think people need to focus on just that mindset part, getting so they can mm-hmm. calm themselves down 
and just know everything gonna be all right. Getting rid of that anxiety, that that going through depression, that mind. If you got your mindset right, getting those skills, even if you have don't have much money now, you would be all right in the end. Cause skills will all mm-hmm. you always be make, able to make money with skills. Skills pay the bills. Skills pay the bills. That's the that's the saying. That's another cliche they got, man. It's yeah, a, that's I a real know, one. Yeah. yeah. So no, that's dope. Um, transitioning from that, man. Something that you spoke about your Instagram account. Um, people having people keeping their nine to five. You know what I'm saying. So if you go online, there's a lot of people, and it's really unfortunate. People are like job shaming that people yeah, got a job. It. Like they sh- they shaming like. You know, they're making people feel less than because they got a job when uh, you can really use that nine to five and that job to help you invest in the futures. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, man. Oh, man. Like, that's one of my pet peeves, that people that shit on other people that have a job. I, I, I'm i one of those people, I don't, I don't understand why. Because number one, every entrepreneur, every real business person understands the value of people with jobs because you may have employees or you may want employees one day. So if you're going to sit on people with a job, you basically sit them on your team. And what sense does that make to sit on the, the people that work with you? Cause you know, without those people, your business wouldn't be where it's at. So that whole mindset with people and, and just, just taking that away from it. If it don't have nothing to do with business at the end of the day, everybody doesn't have to be an entrepreneur and that's okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? Some, cause everybody shouldn't be an entrepreneur cause realistically it's not for everybody. You know what I'm saying? So, for people that people that do that, I I, I can't stand it, man. Because I think, like you said, it makes people. Because some people already have like a low confidence, low self esteem, yeah. where they see stuff like that. Some people could just see that and just like they don't pay no mind to say, hey, forget, it, I'm just keep doing me. But it's other people that see it and they try to prove themselves to their person. They're like, oh man, dang, I really ain't doing nothing right now. I got a job, and then they end up quitting their job with no money, no skills, and end up in a terrible, terrible position all because somebody told them, you don't need a job, get rid of your job, nine to five is for suckers and stuff like that. It's it's ridiculous, man. I always tell people, I'm like, because I remember when I was getting out the military, bro, and I remember telling people, like, yeah, I'm getting out, I'm doing my own thing. And I remember I was talking to somebody, one of my friends, and he was like, man, I want to get out too. And I was like, I was like, really? I was like, do you like being in? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, why you getting out? And he was just like, he couldn't answer me. He was just like, I don't mm-hmm. know. He was like, you about to do it. I'm like, bro, I'm getting out because this is what I want to do. I don't want to be in mm-hmm. long term. You know what I'm saying? If I loved it, I would have stayed in. I would If I love my job, I'm staying there. And I'm like, if you love your job, you love doing this, do what you love. You don't have to be an mm-hmm. entrepreneur. Like, it's okay to have a job and do what you do, get your money, feed your family. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, it's nothing, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you shouldn't yeah. live your life to satisfy other people. If you like doing what you're doing, do it like I think what I tell people is that on the side of investing entrepreneurship may not be for everybody but investing is and investing yeah. is something you can do with that job with that nine to five you know what I'm saying so I think as long as I think if people understood that it would make them feel so much better regarding the people that's trying to shit on them you know what I'm saying because like I said entrepreneurship may not be for you and that's okay it's nothing wrong with it but as long as yeah. you're still using that nine to five money that job money whatever that money that's coming in and you use it to grow and you invest in things, whether it be the stock market, real estate, or your own side hustle, somebody else's side hustle. I don't know anything. And that's fine. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. And that's I think that's what people need to understand. And that's dope. That's that's super valuable for valuable for people out there. Uh man, uh we can we can start wrapping this thing up, man. I've been uh super grateful for you to for, for you coming on the podcast. I appreciate your time. Uh you going, but bro. really before I have my guests leave, I always have my guests leave one last piece of advice for the audience. It can be anything business related, any life related, whatever it is, and we can end it on that note. Yeah, th- definitely, man. And I like I want to say this before we wrap up. I definitely yeah. appreciate you uh, having me on, man. This is uh, yes, this was this was extremely dope, and I'm super like when, when every time somebody asks me to come on their show or anything like that, I'm I'm ex- I'm ex- super appreciative of it because like obviously yeah. you don't have to do that. So I just want to say thank you yeah. first, man, for having me on your yes, platform. Sir. But secondly, uh, always when people ask me this question, I always tell them like immediately like the best advice I could give people is to start where you at right now, mm. start right now, and believe that it's going to sound very cliche is but just believe that you can do it because you can it's nothing stopping you i tell people all the time like all the barriers that you may believe you have in your mind no barrier is greater than 
yourself. You you mm-hmm. are the main reason that you're not where you at or or whatever whatever you want to be. You are that main reason. There's nobody else. And the reason that you will need to understand that and accept that, because the moment you realize that is the moment that you're gonna be doing all the things you want to do. The moment you realize there's nobody out here that's plotting on your your setback or creating a master scheme for you to fail, that you could do whatever you want to do. You can do whatever you want to do as long as you put your time and energy to it. Can't nobody stop you but yourself. You're gonna fly. And you gotta you gotta you gotta really believe that you gotta start where you at. Stop saying, mm. Oh, I'm gonna wait for this to happen, I'm gonna wait for that to happen. Just start right now. Just start planning right now. Just start putting things in order right now. Because if you start now, years from now, when you or or whenever you feel like you really plant want to plant and take off, it'll be so much easier for you to take off because you planted those seeds mm-hmm. so so long ago. So that's all I can say to people is start now and believe that you can do it because you can. But you got the thing is, you got to plan. You got to make plans, man. Like it ain't gonna work mm-hmm. if you don't. Write stuff down exactly what you want to do. How you gonna get there? Because implementation is everything. Like you can have all the, the 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 dreams, goals in the world, but if you don't have a plan to implement and a strategy, creating a strategy, it'll never work. And then one more thing: stop waiting on, stop waiting on so many people to believe you, believe in you before you start. Yeah. Because nobody, nobody's gonna see, nobody's gonna see it until they see you getting the results. And you mm-hmm. can't be mad at that. You don't be mad at if you telling everybody I'm about to do this and they like ah oh, whatever we're not believing in you. Don't get so upset. We like all right, y'all don't believe me. I'm not doing it. Do it anyway. You can do it anyway. And I guarantee you, when you start getting results, they all gonna come back. Oh man, how can I help? I believe in you. And you just gotta be like it, it, that's that's just how the game go. It is what it is. That happened to me with everything I get into, whether it be my company, Parker Capital, my my uh, podcast other business mm-hmm. endeavors is always going to be doubters before you start. That's just how, that's just the test that you got to yeah. go through. That's just, the, that's right. just the test that you got to go through. You get through that. Those people going to come back around. That's just, that's all, that's all I can say for people, man. It's, it's that simple. It ain't rocket science. You just got to mm-hmm. act. Boom. I love it, man. Where can people follow you and uh, where can people reach out to you? I know you're off of social media right now, but where can people get in touch? Definitely, definitely. So, uh, if you want to, if you want to reach out to me, like, well, firstly, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm just taking a little hiatus right now, but I'll be back on there. You mm-hmm. can follow me Instagram and Twitter at Xavier C Miller. If you need me, you can email me. You can email me at Xavier uh, Miller PHCV at Gmail dot com. You can follow my podcast and subscribe to my podcast. It's a top fifty business podcast in the country. Millionaire mm-hmm. Mindsets. You go to uh, M Mindsets uh, Pod on Twitter and Millionaire Mindsets. Subscribe to it on Spotify. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Overcast, mm-hmm. whatever platform you on, it's on yes, there. You, like I said, you can follow me. You can uh, follow my girl, my partner, De- Deanna. Her name Deanna Kent on all platforms. My Park Hill, uh, Park Hill Capital, you can follow us on Instagram at Park Hill Capital. And that's pretty much it, man. You can reach out to me. I always hit back. So, yeah, yes, that's sir. it. Yes, sir. I'll definitely leave all your information in the description of this podcast. Um, But man, again, thank you for coming on. It's been a pleasure. It's been a great conversation. Thank you, bro. Uh, Absolutely. And with that being said, it's your boy Chris, and I'll catch you guys next week.